Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the lift of the McJeep. I'm here for Royal Parts in Overland Park, Kansas, where I have a very qualified person fixing this. Matt. That's me. And right, what am I doing for the lift? Uh, we're going to change out your springs. We have a set of rear springs, a set of front coil springs. We have four shocks, two of them are out of the box. Here's the front, here's the rear. Mm -hmm. uh, on your the rear of your vehicle, we've got a track bar drop down bracket, uh, mounts to the frame side. Relocate your track bar for the height difference. We have a set of sway bar links. These will go on the rear. We'll take the factory rear ones. We'll move those to the front. Uh, we have a set of bump stop extensions, one for the front, one for the rear. We have a set of exhaust spacers. They'll get installed in the exhaust. And then over here we have a dual stabilizer kit. 17 by nines on a five on one twenty seven bolt pattern uh, with a four and a half inch backspace uh, with some BFG LT 31570 17s, which are the equivalent of A35. Because math. <laughs> exactly. All right, first thing we're gonna do is get the wheels off of it, get them out of the way. Makes sense. Here we go. Now I was looking at some stuff and do they put these here to hold on the factory tires when it comes off the line or what's that for? These are to hold the rotor on as it's floating down the assembly line. Now right. those clips will be removed by me. Yes. Reason for that, if you look on your factory wheel, there is a recess that those clips are allowed to set in. On most aftermarket wheels, that recess is not there. Right. Therefore, so, if you were to bolt a flat face down to this, it won't sit flat on that rotor. And eventually the wheel will fall off. That's correct, because you cannot get proper torque if it's not down tight flat. Not everybody knows that, but yep. I thought that was worth pointing out. It is definitely. When it goes to full droop with the lifted height, this brake line will be tight. So what I'm doing is slightly bending it while it's still bolted up and you have some leverage, making sure it still clears the sway bar, still clears the shock. We will unbolt it here shortly to give it room while we're moving the axle down. But right now it's easier to bend this brake line with it still bolted up. I'm gonna remove the axle vent tube. Uh, just temporarily, we will, we will pull it out, make some more room for it, relocate it. And then I'm gonna remove up here on the uh, emergency brake lines the uh, brake cables, I'm gonna take this bracket down off and remove it completely. And then again on the sides over here for the ABS sensors, uh, there's some wires with Christmas tree clips. I'm just gonna remove, there's four of them on each side. I'm gonna remove the inner two closest. And that gives you plenty of room to get it down. I'm gonna remove the rear sway bar links. As I mentioned earlier, these sway bar links are removed, saved and reused on the front of the vehicle. Then I will remove this lower shock bolt. That, once I remove that lower shock bolt, this stand is the only thing holding this up. Now, if you're doing this at home on the ground, this could be a jack if your frame was suspended. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll lower the shock down, the spring will come out, I'll install our new spring at that point. So I'm gonna get going here. Dropping the spring out. Dropping the spring out. Just gotta make clearance for it. Slide her right on out. Make sure you save and reuse your upper isolator. All right, making sure again you have your upper isolator. We're going to pull down on the axle while we do this. Turn it just slightly so we got clearance here. Move our stand out of the way. It seems to be holding up just fine. Get our spring in place. Now I heard that some people use a tool, but I'm the most it's... early man doing themselves. <laughs> that's, that's true, very true. No, the tool is not necessary on these types of coil springs. Uh, if you were in a car where they were under major compression, but we have released the compression by slower, slowly lowering the axle. Uh, if we were to try and take them out with the shock still in place, then you could put a spring compressor on it, but that's just ridiculous. This side is done. Take a pair of dikes, grab them, and just pull. They will break. You have to grab one of the small tabs. They break and pull right off. And you don't need to save them, they're trash. They're, they're trash. Only, they're they are, only good for these stuff. They are assembly is. line things. That is it. They're not for any other purpose. Relocators. You gotta extend them up a little bit and it moves them forward just slightly. This is the last step of this rear of this machine here. So up here in the front, we're gonna do something very similar. Uh, we're gonna put a stand under the axle. We're gonna remove the track bar from the axle end of it. We're gonna remove the sway bar links. Then we'll unbolt the shocks, take out the springs, install new springs, reinstall shocks, reinstall sway bar links, reinstall track bar. Uh, I grabbed the wrong thing. Reinstall track bar. And uh, be back in business up on the front. These are optional that I didn't need to go off stabilizers, but please explain why they're important. 
Uh, when you put a big tire, such as a 35 inch tire on there, there's a, a lot of extra unsprung weight. It can cause a lot of wobble. Uh, this takes that uh, bouncing from the larger tires and hopefully controls it and prevents, uh, prevents that wobble and gives you a better steering feel. Right up here, this is what we're trying to correct with the exhaust spacers. It's not touching, but it's very close. So what we're going to do is in this location here, in this location here, we're going to install a spacer that will move this back about an inch, inch and a half. It'll put it back in a spot that puts you further away from the, uh, the boot on the drive shaft at that point. So right up here, there's a, uh, an alignment dowel on the exhaust pipe. What we're going to do is actually slide the muffler assembly pipe off or to the rear some. We're then going to chisel this alignment dowel off to allow this pipe to slide further in to this pipe when we install the spacers up at the front. Put these hangers in line. One little bit more. And we'll tighten that up. Okay, well, uh, we have completed most of the stuff on the vehicle. The only thing we have left to do at this point is once it's down on the ground, we'll reinstall the track bar. But if we start up front here, we installed a dual steering stabilizer kit made by ProComp. <laughs> uh, we've installed a, a Rubicon Express two and a half inch coil spring on the front and extended shock. We have moved the sway bar links from the rear to the front. We have also installed our one and a half degree caster uh, kits in here, uh, which gets it back to the drive on the street. Don't forget we have removed the, what I call virgin clips <laughs> from the rotors, meaning they've never been off. That was the factory assembly line stuff. Uh, we have also installed our exhaust spacers, which has now given us a lot more clearance between the drive shaft and the exhaust. Won't heat up, won't melt the plastic. If we move our way to the back in the rear here, we have installed the Rubicon Express springs. We have installed the track bar drop down bracket. We have installed the Rubicon Express shocks. The new included sway bar end links from the kit are installed. We have made sure we have clearance on brake lines. We have clearance on all plastic hoses. Nothing is pulled too tight. Uh, there's nothing that's being stretched. So at full droop, when this thing is off road, everything will still function. She's ready. All right, I'm tired of watching you work. Now would be a perfect time for lunch break. I got pizzas, so go get the guys. We'll do it. Go Come get them. Go get them. You guys hungry? Over here we have Mr. Chris and Mr. Michael. They're going to be putting on your 17-inch BFG all-terrain. They're going to mount your tire sensors in the wheel. Then they'll mount the tire on the wheel. Black side out, of course, because that's what you want. And then we'll get them balanced and put on the Jeep. We are putting the sensor with the valve stem onto the wheel. We're going to test fit and see if it'll fit on there. As you can see, this beam sealed there. The beam sealed there. The beam sealed there. The next step, we go to the balancer, and that's where we put the weights on. And that goes in the center of the tire to hold it on. So now that we've got that set, we spin the tire for the first time. And being a new rim, it doesn't have any weight on it. What it's saying is, you require zero more ounces of weight. That's it for this tire. Woo. Come to the side here. Let's show the width and diameter difference. This is your adapter. You can see it raises it up from there to about here. Gives you enough clearance for the difference in that 35 on the bumper. Nothing we can do to adjust the camber on these without changing to an offset ball joint. So we leave those alone. Putting those uh, caster bushings in brought the caster to right at 4, 4.1, 4.2, which is perfect for what we want. Uh, thrust angle, which is the rear being straight, one one tenth off, or I'm sorry, one one hundredth off. Uh, it's about as perfect as you get. Unit, plug it in to the Jeep at the OBD2 port, and follow instructions. All right, here we go, maiden voyage. Drives nice. What do you think? You tell me. I didn't drive it. Uh, wait, no, I'm just saying a look. Oh, it looks fantastic. Borderline douche, but not over uh, You're getting close. Wait until we put the big XD logo on the wheel, yeah. then you'll be there. Okay, what do you think? This is it. Mother of God. <laughs> this is truly worthy of the title, McJeep. McJeep it is. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir, thank you. Excellent work. Well, I appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy it. I will, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you again, Matt. And I'll see you later videos with my big sheep. <laughs> Bye. Enjoy.